If you're one of the many who's been interested in putting your face or the face of others or some object from your life into some generative art you've been creating lately, and you've been looking at things like creating your own Lauras, and maybe you've even learned about how to do it here on this channel, well, I've got another alternative for you that's even more efficient and does a better job. Well, you can be the judge. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI. And if you've been watching the AI art space, you've been hearing all about Flux and a lot about creating what's called a Laura in order to customize this Flux model so that you can create things that are even more relevant to you in your life, like thousands and thousands of photos of yourself or your cat. Or anyway, and since many of you, myself included, barely know what a Laura is, and does it really matter for us to be able to use it? Not really. But if you're curious, what's the difference between a Laura and a locker? Well, I don't know. So let's talk to somebody who's a little bit smarter than me to find out. Imagine you have a big, complicated Lego set now, instead of building the entire thing from scratch every time you want to change something, you just switch out a few important pieces to create new designs faster. That's kind of what Laura and Locker do for computers when they're making art with AI. Laura is like swapping out a few Lego pieces to quickly change how a model works. It makes the AI better at making a certain kind of image, like changing the color or style without having to rebuild the entire set. It's fast and uses fewer resources, which means the AI doesn't have to work as hard. Locker, on the other hand, is a smarter way of swapping out even more efficient Lego pieces. It uses a special trick called the Kronecker product to make even more detailed changes to the AI while still keeping things simple and fast. This lets the AI do even cooler things without using too much energy or time. So think of Laura as a fast way to make cool changes and Locker as an even faster and more powerful upgrade that helps the AI make better art with less effort. We're gonna create a locker today. I'm gonna to show you how easy it can be. Today we're using a service called Tensor Art, and this site is mind boggling. It has so much going on. I couldn't possibly explain all of it to you. At its core, it's a place where you can go and generate customized art with I don't even know how many models are on this system, but like any style you can possibly imagine, you can come over here, click create, and you're gonna have your own little area here. And you'll notice that here it says Bob Doyle Flux, and that allows me to do things like this, put myself in a flux image. See, that's what we're gonna do here. So how do we create this sucker and how do we test it and what is going on? I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm sure I'll be revisiting this site lots of times over the coming months because it's just a great resource for all kinds of things. If you're interested in AI art or video, you need to come over here and see what's going on. Just scan the posts and the workflow sections and you'll see what I mean. But for now, we're here about training. Right along the top, you'll see online training on your right and it says make Laura training easier and that includes the locker training. So let's just click on that right now and here we've got a work ready to train. I just haven't clicked start training now. In this case, I'm creating a specialized model where I want her mostly to be wearing the same clothes in everything we do for her because this is for a book illustration. So we want consistency, although I have found that it's totally flexible after doing this and we're certainly capable of having her wear other things. But the basic process is this. You're going to start by uploading images and you do that as easily as clicking where it says add images and just upload them from your hard drive. You'll notice all sorts of things up here like batch cutting, auto labeling, batch add label, set repeat times. These are all things that you're welcome to go and explore if you'd like to, but if you just want to create something that works, let's just skip that for now. You can go in on a deep dive later. I really want to show you how easy it is. And if I show you all that stuff, you're just going to go, I won't do it. Well, I want you to do it. Over here, you can actually toggle between basic mode and professional mode. And to get to the locker training, you're going to want to click on professional mode because you're going to have a drop down here between Laura and locker. We're going to want to click locker. We're not really going for anime. We might be going for realistic. Yes, but this defaults to loading a stable diffusion 1.5 model. Let's just go to custom and we want to base our model on this right here, the flux dev model. No fancy stuff done to it, just the basics. And that way you're going to ensure the most universal usability of this thing because other models out there are trained on this as well. The next thing you do is you create trigger words and this is the word that you will type into your prompt to make this appear out of 
thin air. And all of these other settings, I just want you to ignore for now. In fact, you know what? Go click basic mode again. I don't want you dealing with all that. That's stressful. But you do want to have a preview prompt because it'll allow you to, well, you know, preview how things are going. Because something that's very cool about this particular site when it comes to training models is you do get to watch the progress. That way, if the model gets trained ahead of the time you've scheduled it for, you can stop the training and go ahead and download it and use it. So in this case, I would say close up smiling one girl, Franny Nanny Flux, because that is the trigger word. I know it's fun. Sitting at a breakfast table in a cozy kitchen, and I would click start training now if I could. But you'll notice that this training would take about 216 credits, and I have 194 remaining because I have been training like a fiend getting ready for this video. I burned through all my credits, but it was totally worth it. So let's go to a project that I've done already, and I'll show you what the next steps would be. Because once you click that start training, it can be anywhere between two and three hours training based on how many images you put in. They will tell you that you can use as few as six. I've seen people say that all over the place, but when I do that, I just don't get the result. I like to use maybe 10 to 15 images and then I'm happy. You do not need to deal with normalization images, which coming from a history of training 1.5 models, I really did think we needed, but you don't, so don't do it. It'll just add way too much time to your training. Now you can check the status of all of your training by hovering over your profile icon and clicking on training. And now you'll have a list of all the training jobs you've done until they expire. You've got a certain amount of time after you train them to download everything you need and move them around so that you can use them again. Here's a training I did of my VA, Presley's, who was a good sport and is allowing me to show you this. And I have identified that this is a locker training by putting locker on her shirt. Now, these are the various stages that were presented to me as the training was going on over the course of that two hours or whatever it was. And so what I'm looking for is the set of images that look really the most like her. In most cases, I found it's gonna be that last set of images, but sometimes it's a set before that. Once you like a set of images, you can publish it and then you have access to it from other parts of the workflow. Now, in this particular case, I've already published this one. This was the locker training, but I've since completed a Laura training because I wanted to compare the two. Which one actually looks better, the Laura or the locker, or can I even tell a difference? So the same thing here, we have the progress of all of these images as they were rendered. And this time we had Laura on her shirt, so I knew what I was doing because I have certainly gotten confused before. So let's just say we look at this and say, okay, yes, that looks enough like her. That looks like her. Either one of these could go, but I'm just going to go ahead with this one here. So I'm going to click on publish and I'm going to create a new project so I could show you how this works. And I'm going to call this Presley Laura for real because I inadvertently labeled that first one as a Laura when it was actually a locker. I don't really want to confuse you, but just in case you noticed that, that was just a typographical error and has nothing to do with the real format of the model. And now I can choose whatever channel this fits in. That's going to be more important if you're making your models public, which I'm not doing. I'm going to go ahead and just click realistic here, or I could do portrait. You can tag it in in the other way. Again, this just makes it more searchable for people. And since I'm not really having this out there for search, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to click on create. Then it's going to prepare the model files based on that set of models that you chose. In my case, it was that last set. Once the models are prepared, this is where you would add things like training steps and the number of epochs and the trigger words. You definitely want in there. And if you've forgotten what the trigger word was, you can go back to your training, click on view parameters, and there it is. Presley Flux Laura. That's the trigger word I'm going to use. No negative prompt. The file is already filled in for me. And it's already chosen some of these pictures, some sample pictures from the workplace. I don't like that one very much. I'm going to say download disabled because I don't want people downloading this. I'm going to actually make it private in just a moment. If I click on publish and here it is. By the way, that is not at all what she looks like. I probably should have taken that one out of the showcase too. Now, if I click on edit project up here, I can scroll down and click on visible to me only and then click on update and now it is visible to me only. It takes about 10 minutes for a new Laura or Locker to get into the system before you can start generating with it. But since I've already got some that I can generate with, I'll just show you how that works. Let's go back over here to create. And let me just clear all of this out. I am gonna leave Flux Dev as the base model because these Lauras and Lockers were trained on that. So if I wanna create a picture and I want Presley in it, I can just create a prompt up here. The first thing I'll need to do is add her Laura into the mix. But if I click on add Laura here and I go to my models, it says nothing here yet because I haven't published it. So how the heck am I supposed to get it in there? Well, that was a question that plagued me for a minute or two. But if I click on my icon, oh, the new one's ready. So let's use that. We'll click on run here 
and it will put it in the list. It will say the author recommends the following parameters and basically recommends the model that we've already chosen. Use recommended. That, by the way, is a very handy feature. And you will also notice right over here under trigger words, it's is put right in there for you. And so all you have to do now is create a prompt and you can click that and it'll put it right up in there or you can just type Presley Flux Laura if you want to. But we need a prompt. And this is about a magazine cover featuring a handsome man. So we don't want that. Let's say smiling at the camera outside of a pizza shop in New York City. It is snowing lightly. Okay, here's a side-by-side. -side. Here's the locker, and here's the Laura, the exact same prompt. They both look good, both slightly different styles, definitely different levels of color richness and things like that, so I guess it's a judgment call, but the locker does look good. All of these models and all of these steps can be downloaded one by one, so you don't actually have to be satisfied with the Laura you first tested. You can test them all, and the ability to download them means that you can run them on your own installations of Automatic 11.11 or Comfy UI or anything else that takes Laura's or lockers. You're just going to click the download icon for whichever one you want, and you're going to be downloading a safe tensors file, which you should definitely rename so that you'll know what it is. So another quick and easy way to make your AI generated art even more interesting and intriguing and compelling by putting you and things that are important to you in your creations. If these are the types of things you like to learn about, well, why not subscribe to the channel? Because we talk about this stuff just about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will.